I'll display the tree view and list view control form. And this displays on the left a tree view and on the right a list view control. On the left I have a list of all my drives with plus signs next to them. If I expand one of these, that turns to a minus of course because there are things in here. For any folder where there isn't anything, clicking the plus sign will just attempt to open the folder but actually remove the plus sign if there's nothing in there. But for now let's go find a folder where we can explore some actual files. There we go. And we'll see in the debug folder there we have some files. And for each file we see an icon that describes that file. It doesn't appear to be the correct icon but close enough. And over here on the right hand side we see size and date modified. Within this list we can sort the items ascending and descending by clicking on the column headers. If I double click a file here it should attempt to execute that file. In this case it loaded the file up in Visual Studio. Let's go back to our example here. And we should also be able to right click on the list view and change its display. Here's large icon view, details view, small icon view, list view, and tile view which is not terribly attractive because I just haven't done the work to make it look better than this. We can also group the file names. So let's go back to details view and group the file names. Unfortunately they all begin with A so it's not very meaningful. But you could see they would be grouped alphabetically by the first letter of the file name if I had chosen a folder with groups of letters other than just A. If we ungroup again, now things are back the way they were. There are a number of various properties that affect the way the tree view control appears. For example, we could show checkboxes next to every item. There's a checkboxes property. There's a hide selection property, which gets or sets a value indicating whether the selected tree node remains highlighted even when we move the focus away. Right now, hide selection is not set to true because we maintain the same selection. There's an indent property which affects how far in the child nodes appear. There's a label edit property which gets or sets a value indicating whether the label text of tree nodes can be edited. Well right now, I haven't allowed editing so I've set that to false. There's a line color property which affects the color of the lines. There's a show lines property which gets or sets a value indicating whether the lines are drawn between the tree nodes. Those could be turned off. There's show node tooltips, which gets or sets a value indicating whether to show a tooltip. For now, I've turned it on, so if I hover over a file and part of the file isn't showing, we can still see what the full name of that file is. It's a useful thing to do when you have a split container control and you want to make sure you can see all the data. There's a show plus minus property, which indicates whether or not you want to see these pluses and minuses here. And there's a show root lines property, which gets or sets a value indicating whether lines are drawn between the tree nodes that are at the root of the tree view. We see right now we have three nodes at the root and they have lines between them because the show root lines property is set to true. Now that you've seen the form in action, we need to investigate how it does its job. Let me stop running for now. There we go. And let's look at the source code for this form. I'll open the sample form so we can examine the code here. Here we are. And let's start by looking at the code that runs when we first open the form. And that's going to be the fill drives procedure. The fill drives procedure starts by looping through all the drives on the computer using the get drives method of the drive info class. And for each drive, it's going to store the key name drive and the name is going to be the drive.name, in our case A, C, or D. If the drive name ends with a backslash, then we want to remove that trailing backslash. We'll need to get the image key associated with that drive. So let's go look at that procedure. It's right here. Based on the drive type, we're going to decide which key name to use so we can pick the right image from our list of images. We have images named CD drive, drive, network drive, floppy. If we can't tell what it is, we'll just pick the generic drive image. 
So we'll store that information with the new node we'll create. Here we'll add a new node to the tree view using the name of the drive as the key, using the name of the drive as the visible name of the node. We'll use the image key, which is one of those drive types, as the key, and the same thing as the image key, so we know what image to display. We'll add a node as a child of this node, named filler, so that we'll get the plus sign. If you don't add a child node, you'll never see the plus sign. And what's the point of having a drive visible in a tree view if there's no way to know you can expand it to get to the folders within that drive? The images for this control come from this image list here. If I show those images, you'll see we have images whose keys match the names of the different drive types. So we'll see the correct image based on the drive type. When you expand a node within the tree view control, in that case, we call the before expand event handler. The before expand event handler occurs before we expand a node in the tree view control. There are a number of things we need to do when we expand a node. First of all, we store away a reference to the node you just attempted to expand in a variable. We clear the child nodes of that node so that filler node gets removed. At this point, there's no plus sign next to our node. Now we're going to get all the folders that are children of the current drive or folder. How do we do that? Well, the first thing we do is get the full path of the current node. The full path property returns back the full path starting where we are all the way back to the root. So it ends up giving us the full file system path of the current node. We store that away, and the fix path procedure just adds a final backslash if there isn't one there already. Now we're going to look at each folder in the list of directories within the path we've just created. For each one of those, we'll get the file name portion and store it into a variable. We'll create a new node and add it to the collection of nodes using the file name as the key, the file name as the text, and here are the icons we'll display when it's selected, actually when it's not selected, and then when it is selected. We have images that correspond to those. So when you open a node, you get a different icon. It's a nice feature. We'll also add the filler node to this node as a child, so we'll get a plus sign next to this node, so we know we can open it to see what's inside. We'll set the tooltip text equal to the full path property of the new node, so as you hover over it, you see the full name of the file. 